So you guys join uh, Instagram and Zoom. Do they need link? They will need link for Zoom now. Or they will just do Instagram and Facebook. Facebook is all right. Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to What's on Your, uh, your Mind. Um, What's on Your Mind Wednesday Live with Michelle Noche today. Um, it's good to have you here. It's a lovely Wednesday evening. Not, uh, not we're not being bombarded with rain here in Portacot, in the city of Portacot. I hope you're having a lovely weather also where you are. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, the people that follow us on, on Instagram, um, I welcome you. I already see um, a couple of people coming in on Instagram. Um, on Facebook, on Zoom, and also we always have this on our YouTube channel. Um, you can follow us on our YouTube channel um, where you will get all these messages, all this presentation um, are out there. You can enjoy um, from it. Why do we do Wednesday Live? What, what is the essence of doing this? This is, this is a mentoring session um, where we ask questions. I, I think this really took up um, during the lockdown. A lot of people were confused. A lot of people were not earning. A lot of people just needed to hear a voice of hope. A lot, a, a lot of people just needed to hear someone talking to them. And, and I think that that is what made all this worth it, um, where people just come and um, where people just come to listen. And, 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 and it's a thing of joy for me to be that listening ear, uh, a thing of joy to be that voice of counsel that can help you. Because I know all of us have been there. I've been there when you think that um, you, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You just feel, you're just thinking you're about your problem and you're just thinking. And the more you think about a particular issue that you have, you realize, you will realize that, you know what? You will realize that that, um, that is all you are imagining. Daniel, that is all you are imagining. You know, um, you will realize, and that thing begins to magnify begins to magnify, let him join me again. Um, it begins to magnify and begins to magnify. You just keep thinking, you just keep looking, you just keep seeing that, um, you just keep seeing that, um, this first one, it's, you just keep seeing that, um, you just keep seeing your issues and you are just looking at it, you're just looking at it um, and all you get to see and all you get to see is, all you get, all you get to see is these issues. And those issues become bigger. Those issues become bigger, Banji. Those issues become bigger and bigger. They become magnified. And you just see that you cannot, you don't see a way out of it. But this is what happens. Because you're so immersed in that issue, you, you don't know, you don't see a way out. But now, now somebody else just comes, somebody with a fresh brain, somebody that doesn't have that issue, will just tell you, hey, this is the way now. This is this is what is happening. You, you're going too far. You're going too far. Why don't you just why don't you just look at it this way? There's, I think many, many years ago, um, I, I was having an issue. And a friend of mine just said, ah, what are you doing? This is, is a simple thing. Just that word, this is a, a simple thing. Just that word, this is, this is how, just that word, this is how, um, this is how you should do it. And I started realizing, I said, look, oh, I was not even thinking about it. Some of the questions, some of the answers to the questions that we ask are actually simple. They are really that simple, but because your mind is troubled, you don't have you don't have the ability at that time to be able to process, analyze, and break things down. 
This is where people get stuck. Not because they are not intelligent to see their way out or to, um, or to find a way out of it. No, it's because they are just burdened with it. All they see is the issue. So they just need somebody that can guide them, somebody that can help them. And this was what we did during the lockdown. And we started having followership every Wednesday by 4 p.m. West African time. We started having followership. And that's where we are today. And we just ask people to ask us questions all you need to do is just put out a question in, our, in my DM and we'll take it and we will answer you. Okay, so today we have, we have one question um, and with me today I have uh, um, a group of my colleagues here um, uh, and that will help us um, dissect, analyze this, this and help NOSA. Um, NOSA sent in um, Nosa sent in a, a, a question here and he wants us to do justice to it. And like, I, and I, what I will say is that it is, it is, it is okay. Ghetto, I see Ghetto Righteous, um, Ola of Lagos, I welcome you to, um, um, to Instagram. And those of you on Instagram and Facebook, I welcome you. Today we are dealing on a very important very, very important. All of us are going to learn from it today. Um, we're going to learn from it today. And I'll just read out the questions um, while I throw, throw it out there on the floor. Nosa says, good evening, sir. I have a challenge with my wife. Ever since we had our first child, she has been a different person. She's given into paranoia and all the horror stories I have heard about women are coming true before my eyes. All the horror, horror stories I have heard. So it means that now um, those stories that you have heard have become, and you know, it is somewhere ingrained in your subconscious mind and you're using, perhaps you're using it to, um, to judge every situation, but it ought not to be so. But let me finish the question. It says, at times when she realizes herself, she sees how different she has become and the fear that I am getting tired of her adds to her paranoia. Her emotions are everywhere all the time. We need help because of my sanity is being challenged. What do I do? There are three um, important questions, but before I go, let me just introduce my co-panelists here this evening. I have Nebari Fakai. Um, good evening. Have, nice having you here today. Um, we we'll hope to see more of you on Wednesday. What's on your mind? Wednesday live. Welcome. Um, I hope I know that your 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 thoughts will be valuable to Nosa today. Banji Ola Banji Steven, welcome also to What's on Your Mind Wednesday live. Good having you here today. Um, we are, I'm, I'm eager to hear you guys talk. Okay, so let me just, um, three things that just came at me as we speak from what, uh, what is written. Some of the challenges I have is that I don't, I don't get the whole information. I don't get the whole information. So I might not be, sometimes I have to, I have to, um, sometimes I have to assume some certain things. Um, you know, but if you want someone to fully um, to fully counsel you, maybe I will need more. But we will just work with what we have, and I will just start with the first thing I saw here. Um, that um, the first red flag I saw here, she's she's given into paranoia, and all the horror stories I have heard about women is coming true before my eyes. That's a red. That's a red flag. You are going to a journey. You see, marriage is a journey. When you enter that journey, you don't think there is no, there's, there's, there is no perfect, nobody can advise you that this is how marriage, this is how you should work it out. I think that every advice you get concerning marriage is, is like a, is like a counsel you get. It's just an advice, like a firm work you still need to build the foundation. Everything I, I just, when I give you an advice, 
or when you take an advice from someone, you need to go and see how you can apply that advice to you and your spouse. So you have heard so many things about women. Marriage is what, when you enter this marriage, you have to enter with an open mind. Don't enter thinking that your wife is going to be like other women. Because you see, what you, what you wish for, somehow, when you think what your uncles and what um, people have told you about women, if you have it at the back of your mind, then that is all that you are going to, that going to receive. That's all you are going to see. A young man sat in my office and told me, girls of nowadays, all they are doing is about money. That if you don't have money, you can marry. If you don't have money, you can't even date. I said, what is wrong with you? And he started, he wanted to lecture me, or in fact, I try, he actually started telling me that without money these days, you can marry, that there are no good women out there, everything is about money. And, and you know, and, and by the time I spoke to him, you know, and I, I told him that that is your worldview, and your worldview becomes your reality. So, no, sir, if you say, forget about other women, that's not how your wife is going to turn out. Forget about that. That's a red flag. See, once you marry, realize that boyfriend, girlfriend is different from um, husband and wife. Whatever must have happened to other people, that is their story. Now you are charting your own cause. Another thing you said is um, when she realizes herself, um, she, she becomes, she knows that she's different. When she realizes herself, she, um, she knows that she's, she's different. Yes, there are experiences that are things that happen to women when they give birth. Of course, she will realize it. And now I am hearing getting tired of her. Um, she becomes paran uh, paranoid because she's, um, she feels that you are getting tired of her. Getting tired. You people just got married, just have a, a, a child. I thought you said that this marriage is uh, for a lifetime. Getting tired where? Do you get tired of being alive? This is your life. This is your reality. Please, no, sir, you can't get tired. You said I do before God and men. And now we have followed you to that wedding. You must continue. Some of the things that break marriages is not because of the issues they are facing. It's a mindset thing. You know? And so I hope um, you say emotions are everywhere. Of course, it happens to women and it lingers more uh, on some than the others. So yes, you guys need help. Uh, but I think that this help is trying to see how things work. So I'm, I'm going to give my, my panelists some um, time to talk. They are going to talk about it. And we all are going to learn uh, from it. Then I will round up. So I will, I will, um, I will yield the mic, um, so to say, to Nia, Nia Bari Fakai. I will kneel, yield the mic to you. Um, and let's see, and, and let's hear what you have to. I brought out those three things. Um, so let's let's hear from you before we move on to Banjim. Yes. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, first of all, like I said, if the way I look at it, when context is not exactly what we want to know, what we already know as expectation. Now, when someone says chorus of women. It's written in the Bible that um, said that to be mm. at the corner of the roof than to be in a house with a nagging wife. It's better to um, a nagging wife is like a process that does not go up. If you've ever had a tap, that you have not walked up well, and it's always dripping, and I know that it's very irritating. So if um, our brother here is talking about um, morals of women, then I believe he's talking about her being um, somewhat restive, um, her nagging, um, her being upset randomly uh, for no reason, and um, that. And uh, the, the question I have to ask is if she's par par she has paranoia, why does she have paranoia? Uh, part of the things that contribute to paranoia for women, I, I can tell. Uh, because I know is um, what is suggested. Sometimes when we are in relationship, we talk. We put issues out there, we come out and say, oh, okay, this is how I feel. I like this kind of women. This is my spec. I like slim women. I like women whose bodies are like that. 
Now, all those things now come back, they register somewhere in the minds of the women that we are with. But some of us uh, have, known, have, have known people who are super models and they are still uncomfortable with their bodies. And you would say people have bodies that they are still on a level of people uncomfortable with their bodies. And it is because something has registered in their head, someone has told them, or you may have suggested that this is the kind of woman I like. Now, when you have a child, a lot happens to a woman's body. Uh, some people have things that move and do not retract. That means um, their body may adjust in a certain way and may not go back anymore. Stretch marks will come up. Other things that um, appear as uh, um, stuff that other people can shape a woman's body with, they happen to that body. So, if somewhere in her mind she may have heard it before, Say, I like women who look like this. I like the coming of the child. Though that child is a gift, she has assessed herself, and maybe she believes she cannot get her body back the way it was before. That automatically starts to weigh on her mind. Now, um, what would be the suggestion for this? First of all, you, who is the boss man, needs to uh, remind her that you are in love with her and tell her who she is. I know that your skin will wrinkle, your, your the soft, uh, softness of one's flesh will eventually uh, not really matter. But the love that you have for that person will stay. And what she knows as love is what you have reaffirmed all the time, regardless of whatever your reality is. And uh, so uh, nobody marries to stay with that woman because she has a body of a 20 year old or 19 year old, 15 year old, and you stay like that. Course, uh, something will happen to that body. Something will happen to that person. So what that means is subconsciously, the husband is supposed, mm -hmm. supposed to already accept that as this progress is happening to this woman, uh, it is my role to ensure that she has security, emotional security. The husband is there to be security all around, mental, financial, uh, emotional, and the likes. So when a woman is doing this girl in her own home, after having a gift for the child, it is an emotional security challenge. Uh, that, so, yes, she should uh, have some form of uh, reformation of whatever love you have professed mm -hmm. from the get go. Uh, Pastor Chin has said, mm -hmm. You are married for life. So there is nothing else you can do but stay married for life. But on the flip side, look at it too. The woman should also be encouraged to have an outer body experience. What is an outer body experience? The woman should be able to remove herself from herself. Some people are so self-absorbed that they do not understand where they have become the problem. And they just function. And they function with the mentality that this person is thinking of me like this. Mm -hmm. And they give that action without any form of confirmation, mm -hmm. whether the proposed thought is true. So while um, you are reaffirming uh, whatever love you have professed over time, and the things that are the foundation, the bedrock of your relationship or your marriage, because it can't necessarily be totally physical. It can't necessarily be totally about the form of the body. There should be more to what you have. While you are reaffirming that, she should remove herself from herself to say, if I was a husband, I would like to know how the wife be looking like this. Um, knowing that, um, this man is actually happy that I have a child. This man is actually happy that my family has grown. This man is actually happy that we have a, a, an heir. Our, our family has become this. Why should this be a challenge? Why are you actively working at this? My husband, I'm sorry, I know that you may have like a woman who is safe and have this and have this and have this. I'm working um, on, on it. However, I'm working on it. However, I think. Um, you should at least be encouraged because I am working on it. So I think these that these two things are like the few things I can put out uh, for now. I will um, let Raj uh, say one of the things. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, that was how we can ask you for this message. Okay, so I think that generally, um, this, uh, and I'm going to try to uh, especially for the sake of the people that 
Thank you, thank you, uh, Manji. Thank you for that contribution. Nia, thank you for your contributions. I think Nosa, I think we've more than helped you here. I just let me just cap it off before we move on here today. Is out. Um, let's let's just um, let me just cap it off. They talked about um, changes. We all we all need that. Um, know that it happens to to women. Um, there, there are changes in their body. You know, so as as the man, there are some certain responsibilities that you come to realize that lies with you um, for you to be able to take care of. You are the head of the home uh, for certain reasons. You know, um, I, for me, being married for um, 18, going to 19 years, I realized that there are some things that there are some things that you realize that is your responsibility that nobody ever told you. Some of the things that used to irritate you, all of a sudden you realize that this is your responsibility and you have to make the best use out. Um, you have to make the best use out of it. Okay, so we, we are talking about bodies. Of course, there will be changes, both for the woman, both for the man. And some of these changes linger on in um, in, in certain women more than the others. So some are, women are particular about their bodies. They, 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 are, they draw a lot of um, their self-esteem and well-being comes from their body looking a particular way. And their spouse needs to be able to tell them and to always affirm. If I want to use one word to summarize this is affirmation, confirmation that you love them, that you see beyond the body, see beyond those changes. And see, and, and, and I, I will, I will I, when I saw this, I started laughing. And I say some of the experiences you get as a man that they might not teach you in a marriage counseling class is to understand how women talk, uh, how women talk and how women reason. Uh, a woman will ask you, am I fat? A woman adds weight. As you add, you as she asks you, "Am I fat?" Please, won't be tidy to say agree that you are that she's fat. You you understand? You all she needs to know when a woman says, "Am I fat?" And you now say, "Yes, I think you have added weight." Wrong wrong answer. What she is trying to tell you is that for what you need to say is that uh, no, I don't see that fat. I am seeing you. You know it's. All she just needs is that encouragement. Women are not like men in terms of they are, they, they are particular about their body and how they look. All they just need is just that one word to say, I love you regardless. I didn't marry you. You know, I have a friend and one of the things that they waited for, uh, for a child for, for 15 years. And one of the things that got the woman through it is that the man keep telling her, I didn't marry you because of children. I didn't marry you. I didn't see, it wasn't because I wanted a child. That's why I married you. I needed that companionship. This is the person that I need to stay um, the rest of my life with. 
And that was what kept her um, going, knowing that there is more to this union than, than children. The, the society puts a lot of pressure on people to have children. If the children don't come early, it doesn't mean that you, we did not marry to have kids. We married for that companionship. So whether it comes early or it doesn't come is not the reason for the union. It's just, it's just a product of the union. So the same way is when you guys saw each other and married and decided to get married, you got married because of you want to spend the rest of your life with this person. You know, um, my wife asked me, is like, I've added weight. Am I okay with it? See, that question, I've been hearing it for 19 years. And I know that I'm going to continue to hear it for the rest of my life. So it used to upset me, but now it doesn't upset me because I've come to realize that that is, women need that affirmation. They need to know that the man in their life is telling them that, telling them those words. Because me, I don't see it. You, if you're with somebody, you don't know when they add weight, when they lose weight, you don't know because you see more. You see, you don't look at, I, I, you don't look at them and look at the figure. You look at the person. You are talking to someone. So I keep telling her when she wants to work out, you know, she was doing some diet. I said, look, this diet is better. You work out and lose that weight gradually than to be doing um, one that diet after the other, doing one exercise after the other. I'm not saying those things are not good, but I also believe that you can gradually come down. So what I tell us, look, I need you to lose weight, not because of fat, so that you'll be healthy, because we've come to the age that we need to do to make sure that we're healthy. So those are the kind of encouraging words. All of us, all of us, even men, we need encouragement. We need somebody to say, ah, you are trying. I went to the office of someone that is a known billionaire, in, uh, in, 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 this, in this part. And he just built a new office. And I went there and I was saying, wow, this is awesome. This thing that you have done, you have encouraged me. And he said to me, I said, look, coming from me, that these words mean something to him. I said, what if I have hundred billion dollars, if I have hundred billion naira in my account, I don't need your affirmation. I don't need your confirmation. I know that I'm doing well. But you understand, but he needed it, he needed to hear it. And he said, coming from me, it was weighty. All of us need to hear you are doing well. You know, your kids also need to hear you're doing well. So you must develop that attitude of praising. You know, I, I, I did not have it at all in me to be, to praise people or to acknowledge people. You know, I, all of us have to learn some people, it comes natural, naturally, naturally to them to say, oh, your hair is fine, your clothes is fine, you know, give compliments, both male and female, both rich and poor. Give people compliments, they will love you. Is that one of the ways that you can continue to be charming um, to people? Give people that compliment, you know, give people that compliment. And so it is it's important that you learn that you need to understand how your wife works. Um, how the mind of a woman works, especially your wife. And so when she says things, she just needs a kind word. Some of those things that are happening, they are happening because you are reacting differently. Now start reacting positively. And when she says something you love, encourage her. Say something you love. By the time you keep encouraging her, her self-esteem will begin to go up. Now she has a low self-esteem because she just gave birth. Now what you need to do is begin to speak those words to her and just know that for the rest of your life, the rest of the life you have together, you have to keep encouraging her and keep encouraging her. By the time you are pumping her with those words, she becomes more comfortable. Because women can have this um, um, insecurity issues at times. And so, but when you are affirming her, when you are giving her that, um, um, that affirmation, when you are giving her the reason, you know, a word, there's a word I'm looking for, um, confirmation, affirmation, oh, uh, assurance, assurance. You need to give her that assurance. 
give her that assurance. You need to continue to reassure her that she's your world, that she's everything. And the, see, maybe when you start out, there's always something in the mind of women that men will always misbehave. And you can never take that away. So if you can be married 20 years and there's something in their mind that a man will misbehave and pack, her, pack his load and leave one day. So they need assurance. Every time, every opportunity you have, you have to continue to give them that assurance. And guess what? When you keep doing it, they keep, they now become bolder. They are more encouraged. They now become the, the self-esteem or, or rather the, um, the low self-esteem will go. Um, that insecurity will go because you are faith comment by hearing, hearing the word of God. Faith comment also by hearing you speak. Then she will begin to have faith in you and in your marriage. And when a woman has faith in you and in your marriage, she begins to, her beauty begins to come out. That thing that she's withholding because she doesn't know if you will just one day change, she will bring it all out. Let me tell you. Women trust in faces and they open up in faces. The more you continue to tell her those words and to reassure her, the more she comes out, the more she comes out and the beauty of the woman comes out. I tell you for 19 years, I have seen the beauty of my wife come out in faces to the extent that she's ready to give everything that she has just by the word of mouth, just by encouraging her, by being there for her, telling her that she is beautiful, telling her what those things you're telling her, reassuring her that it's going to be all right. There's no money, but she needs that assurance that it's going to be all right. Carry her along in what you're doing. Make sure you share your vision with her. Let her be part of her, your vision. Let her see herself in your vision. And these are the things that will take away insecurity. And when the insecurity is, is gone, then the beauty of the marriage starts. Please, you say tired. You can't be tired, though. No, sir, you can't be tired. You just started this journey. You cannot be tired. This is the advice um, that, that I have for you um, that can help you. Um, I think Nia is also writing. Um, um, it's, 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 um, it's, it's also writing some of the things I've said. So I think that, please, no, sir, you, you, can, you can make it work. It is excellent. Um, um, what you are facing is not is nothing new. It's nothing new at all. It is nothing. It is nothing new at all. It is. It is nothing new at all. Um, so please just try, and you can work it out. You can do it. Some of this advice you will not get in marriage counseling. It comes from somebody that has been in the game, and so take that advice and and run with it. I know. Uh, it will be well with you. If you have other questions, no, sir, um, please go ahead and um, and you can still ask. Just drop your number. Sorry, just drop your question and we'll answer. But no, sir, we also like to know where you are, um, where you are residing. We just want to know, sir, Lagos, Canada, US, wherever, so that we can know um, where we can determine our reach, really. Um, so if you can help us do that. So I will give my speakers each one last, um, just one last word before I will round up with um, um, tonight. Last words, last words, any last words? Banji, let's, your last words, let's hear from you. Okay, Nia, are you there? Any? Okay. All right. Um, I think Nia is gone off. No, he's not there. Um, it's gone off. Okay. So, um, thank you. All you just need to do, all you just need to do is just send a question. Just put in your question in in my DM, and we'll answer you. Wednesday, every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Nigerian West African time, uh, we come and we answer questions. And like today, I bring panelists, um, and the panelists will also bring in their own fresh ideas 
their own different ideas so that we can help you. This is our mentoring session that helps us um, to be there for people. You know, someone um, went to my, someone told someone, uh, a friend to go to my website. Um, I counseled someone um, on this, uh, what's on your mind. And he sent it to a friend, the link and said, listen to what this man said. And this friend now said this, this her friend was about to commit suicide, but the counsel I gave was, was what made her change her mind. I, you know, I, I made her change her mind and, and she has bounced back just because she heard me speak, counseling somebody else. And, and she later sent in her question. I didn't even know that she later sent in her question, which we also dealt with. And today um, she's alive. We thank God because somebody was there. You know, we've had businesses turn around. We have people change, mindsets broken, changed, and, and people are set free for mental blocks that have kept them stagnant, that have kept them in one place. So it is good for somebody for you to hear a voice of caution, a voice of advice. And, and I think that this is what we bring here um, Mark, from Marketplace Apostle. We bring to this um, um, what's on your mind. So um, today we've come to the end, but please, before you go, um, I just want to share some information with you. Um, if you want, we've had a situation where um, people say to me, I need more time. Um, just one hour, I need you to coach me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've coached a lot of people to greatness, a lot of successful people in Nigeria, outside Nigeria have benefited from my, my coaching. Um, so if you want to be part of it, um, this is, you are saying that I need you to block off time for me. Um, I need you for one month, two months, three months, um, six months. This is what I want to achieve. If you have a personal drive, a personal vision that you want um, to deal with you one-on-one, -on -one, uh, please, you can reach out and we can make that happen. Um, so just reach out and, and I can do that. That's what I do. Um, this is more like a CSR for our coaching outfit where we coach. Um, but this one, if you can't just ask me a question, I will answer. If you know somebody that um, has a question also, you can just share this link. This is what um, I will advise you, or this is what I urge you to do for us to just help us share this, this link to someone to ask us a question. Also, every Monday, 5 p.m. West African time, um, I do a webinar. Marketplace Apostle brings uh, what's um, the marketplace with which one of and we have five areas of focus, business, career, leadership, personal finance, relationships and life issues. These are the areas that we have. Um, so we bring a webinar on this area. So I want to invite you on Monday for it and also next week, Wednesday for what's on your mind. Before you go, I want to invite you specially. This is our flagship event. It's once a year, it's called Make in Nigeria Exhibition and Conference 2021. This year is going to be awesome. We have many speakers from all over the world, from the US, from South Africa, from Australia, and wonderful keynote speakers from Nigeria will be speaking to us from the 7th to the 9th of um, October. And so I hope to see you. Um, unfortunately, it is virtual this year, but I tell you, everything you will expect from a live event, you will get it. We are exhibiting, um, so you will get it um, in this event. So don't say it's virtual, maybe you won't carry weight. It carries the same weight and the same things you will enjoy in a live conference, you will get it here. And guess what? You stand a chance of winning part of the $1,500 um, grant that is, is going to be given out during this period. So please quickly go to www.makingnigeria.com and register uh, or you can register also go and um, register to attend the conference or register as an exhibitor. Um, it's all there. You get all the information on www.makingnigeria.com. I hope to see you. I want to specially invite you 
for that. And I know that a lot, even after this program, we have a lot of packages, a lot of program that we're going to use, um, that we're going to introduce to you. A lot is going to happen from October. So don't say it's just an event. It's only starting after the event. I hope to see you. Marketplace of also has a lot to offer this time. And please, we'll bring you the Make in Nigeria 2021. It's the largest conference and exhibition in the South, South and Southeast of Nigeria. You don't want to miss it. And please, I want to invite you. Please invite someone. All that I ask, oh God, all that I ask right now is that for you um, to just share this link with someone, let them know what is happening. Let them know what we give out. We give out to programs every week on Mondays and Wednesdays. That once a month, we have a physical program, um, physical conference for those in Portacourt. We have a physical conference. So I want to share this and leave you with this um, today, making Nigeria. Thank you for tuning in. We've come to the one hour mark. I don't want to keep us more than one hour. I'll see you on Monday. Have a good night rest. To those of you um, that are going to church, have a good night rest. God bless you guys. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.